It's an ecological jewel. Lake Naivasha, just two hours' drive west of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, attracts hordes of visitors. Tourists, too, come in large numbers. The lake is one of Kenya's most visited spots and a lifeline for hundreds of thousands. People rely on its fresh water for drinking. The lake also feeds some of the largest flower and vegetable farms in East Africa. The lake provides jobs and even much needed energy. Three geothermal power plants depend on the water resources in Naivasha's basin and the lake plays a major role. So how is Kenya managing this vital resource? Satellite images taken between 1970 and 2008 show the green forest in the upper catchment of Naivasha is thinning fast. In fact, it's disappearing as fast as Naivasha's population is exploding. Nigel Carnelli, a tourist lodge owner and his family, have been living here for three generations. Carnelli says he's never been more worried about the fate of this national treasure. Well, if you go and measure the depth of the lake now, you will see that there's probably less than four metres left, right in the middle. And the average depth is going to be way less than two metres. And we know that four metres is missing over the last 25 years. So we've only got an average of two left, do the sums and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out that you've got something like eight years left. It's a worry shared by the Kenyan government and UNEP, which reached similar conclusions in their recently released Kenya Atlas. We ventured to the lake for further research, measuring depth near the lake centre. As soon as it hits the bottom, that. That's it. Nine feet in the centre of the lake. Not very deep. Lake Naivasha, one of Kenya's most precious resources, is dying. And one of the reasons is hard to miss. The cedar and bamboo forests that covered the escarpment, from Eburu to Inusupukia, are being destroyed and fast. On this day, we see rising pillars of smoke caused by careless coal makers who chopped down trees and lit fires that were now out of control. We travelled to the forest to speak to resident communities about the deforestation and its impact on their livelihoods. Solomon Kirao is a farmer and ecologist. He was born in this area and says that since coal production began here in 1982, their lives have been ruined. Destruction dio ilianza katika Eburu forest. Na wakati ambapo ilianza, saa hiyo hiyo mvua hapa kwetu ikaanza kukatika. Moments later, we get closer to the forest fires we saw from the lake. I can see three, four chopped down trees in order to make this mound where they've buried the wood and tried to make it oxygen proof so that they can make the charcoal. We've been walking around the forest now for about five hours. We've come across coal mound after coal mound, what the Kikuyu call muhukko. There are very few old trees like the ones we see behind us left. All around, they're very, very new trees, too young for them to burn down. The effect on the environment is clear. The ministry that is in charge of forests and ourselves working together must continue to seek for solutions with the understanding that there is a human problem here, both social, political, and even economic, because those people basically went there to look for livelihood. Chopping down trees means there is nothing to hold the soil, which washes down into the lake. Silting is now a major problem. Local environmentalist Douglas Chege explains that this track, just metres away from the lake shore, isn't in fact a dust track. It's a tarmac road, covered in silt and soil. This, this was tarmac? 
Yeah, this, the tarmac is down here. Somewhere. And this is the siltation. Jeez. And if the vehicles are not moving around, the vehicle, the, the high will be this side. You get to this railway. Yeah. yeah. That's the, the width of my palm on the main road. Yeah, and yet we haven't gone to the tarmac because still there's more soil here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the rig. It should be three, five times this depth. And the two rivers which feed the lake are tapped, meaning even less fresh water for those who rely on it. A diversion has been made from the Malewa River to provide water to Nakuru town, now competing with Naivasha. As it is, residents by the lake are suffering. As evening comes, Naivasha residents gather what water they can to cook, drink and bathe. For this woman, it means taking what water she can from a waste pipe. It could mean her family's own demise. Naivasha is a source of water for the nation's energy and farms. It quenches the thirst of tens of thousands of lake residents. But the quality of the water is unstable. Decades ago, the lake practically disappeared into the Rift Valley for natural reasons. But under current management, this precious resource has a precarious future.